uh, hello. Today I'm gonna be doing some, uh, three blind walkthrough solves. Uh, I do think there are better walkthrough solves than what I do, or than what I'm going to do, because there are just better three blinders out there who have made walkthrough solves. Like, one that comes to mind is Jake. Jake Klassen has some very good walkthrough solves on some cool, um, three blind tricks that you should definitely check out, because they're cool. Um, they're pretty advanced, though, so I don't think they're very applicable unless you're, like, already sub-20 and you're looking for, like, that little bit of time save. But they are still cool, and I definitely recommend them. This, the walkthrough solves that I'm going to do today are what I would actually do in a solve. Um, I'll mention stuff that you can do, but I, I'll say, like, I wouldn't even do this in a solve if I wouldn't. So this is really just what a sub-20 solver does in his solves. Because I haven't seen much of that. I've only ever seen, like, really cool, like, you know, crazy 300 IQ type stuff. Which is still very cool, right? Like, Jake is a very... Oh, my monitor fell asleep. Jake has very cool solutions. But if you're looking just to get, um, you know, sub-20, maybe sub-20, like, low 20s or whatever, Jake's stuff might be a little, like, you know, over the top for that. So I thought I would make some example solves just to help with um, some easy tricks you can start impl implementing into your solves if you haven't already, as well as just a few helpful words of advice. So before I get started with the example solves, I'd like to talk about a few things that are that I don't hear people talking about, or I hear people talking about and are really obscure and hard to like actually understand what they mean. And so first, and um, the most important part is to get good at three blind without full floating and like without very cool tricks, there's three very important things that you have to be aware of. And the first part is corner memo. And um, for a, for a long time, I would memorize corners with like almost like half audio, half words. And that's a very bad idea. Um, there's two reasons. One, you'll forget corners. And a lot, like half of your solves, you'll forget corners, and then you'll just keep doing that. And corner memo is like, I made a list of three things that I think are the most important, like fundamental parts of three blind. And that's one of them, is you have to make sure that your corner memo is solid, you remember it, and you just know all of it without having to think about it at all. Because that thinking time wastes a lot of time. So, corner memo is very important, and if you're watching this and you're a three-blinder, just, just think about how you memorize corners, because it's very important, and um, a lot of DNFs are probably related to corner memo in some way. At least it was for me. Second is don't turn fast. Like, that sounds counterintuitive, like, well, you want to turn fast, you want to finish the solve fast. Turning fast is bad for two reasons. One... Having a calm mind is very important for three blind. Like, being like, add it, add it, add it, like, go, 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 go for three blind is horrible. And it causes you to lock up, it causes you to forget memo, it causes you to just DNF and miss turns. So just be calm and um, turn slower. And what I mean by that is, like, if you're going really fast, you're going to be like, you're going to, okay, I'm a bad example, but if you're, like, going really fast, you're going to be like that, as opposed to just, like, Like, that's so much faster than, like, go, 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 go. And also, you're going to pause and forget memo. So, calm, smooth turning is very important. And lastly, um, don't pause between edges and corners. Like, I, on, I in, like, subconsciously did this for months. And only when I watched my solves over, I'm like, I have, like, a half a second to a second pauses before edges and corners. So, as you're... As you're executing your last few edge comms, make sure you're, like, remembering what maybe the corner memo was about, or, like, what the image was, or what the first letter pair is. And one thing that I did that really helped me get, get rid of that pause is make the first letter pair of your corner images, so right when you lift the cover, make, like, a really strong image of that first letter pair, or, like, really remember what that first letter pair is, and then all of corner memo after that will just come naturally after that. And so I'll do an example 
for the first solve of like what I would do. But after that, I'll just not memorize corners. But those are the three important things that I found really help. Solid corner memo. Um, don't go, go, go. Calm, smooth, relaxed, like turning. And then get rid of that pause between edges and corners. And that helps a lot. And so I'll just get into the first solve now after that little prelude. And so, like I said, I'll I'll tell you what I would do for the first corner memo, and then after that, I'll just kind of um, not tell you how I memorize corners. So the first is OH. So I would remember like, oh, so some guy's like, oh, and then he's about to realize something, and really, really remember that, that your first letter pair is like, oh, very important. I even say it out loud sometimes, just so like really remember it. And then uh, GA, I... J.A., I remember the um, crazy Russian hacker guy saying, like, yeah in Russian, because J.A. is, like, yes in Russian. So, ja, divey. And so, I remember, like, oh, yeah, dive, like, diving. And like I said, if you really remember that first, everything just kind of follows after that. So, that's what I remember. And also, um, we have parody. And so, another thing that I do that I haven't really heard people talk about it's probably not a good idea to do either, is how I memorize corner twists. Because I actually remember corner twists differently, depending on if I have parody or no parody. And this just kind of came on, like, instinctively without, like, actually thinking about it. And so if I have parody, I will remember the U, U D face sticker, if I have parody. And if I don't have parody, I'll remember this sticker, because... The solution that I would do if I didn't have parity is just this two twist, right? Because that's all you'd be left with. But if you do have parity, this isn't what you're left with. You have to, like, you'd have to do a parity alg and then twist this, but I'm going to break into the twist. And you can break into the twist for um, non parity scrambles. There's actually a video that Noah Swore did on the cubing scene about how to do that. I don't think it's worth it. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't think it's worth it at all. And I'm probably never going to break into twists on non-parity scrambles just because it's like, it's hard and it's really not that worth it. But for parity scrambles, it's definitely worth it. And um, I'll show you how I do that at the end. So I'm not going to go over edge memo. I'm just going to execute it. We are doing UF UR swap because we have parity. And so the first elg is pretty straightforward. Um, I'll have the scrambles in the description if you want to follow along, because I'm not going to, like, be like, here to here is this. I'm just going to show you what algs I use. So that's how I'd finger trick it. Pretty straightforward. And then, remember, we really made that solid image O, so we're going to be able to go right into corner memo, save that, you know, half a second to a second of thinking, like, wait, what was my image again? Because that's a huge waste of time, actually. Um, so... And then we get to our, uh, where we're going to break into the twist. And so our last target is here. And I remembered that the UF, or UD face sticker is there. So I'm going to go from here to there. And then if you do that, you will always get either the U face parity elg on that piece, or the D face parity elg on that piece. So we're going to get this, because we are on this piece, and we're going to get the D face parity elg. Which makes sense, because you targeted that. So it's going to go up to there, and since that was the U, or that was the D face sticker, you're going to get D face parity. And so that's how I'd handle the first solve. And so I'm just going to go straight into the second one. By the way, I'm standing up and holding the cube pretty awkwardly, so if I'm like locking up or like, yeah, that's why. I'm not really holding this cube all that comfortably. And so, uh, we do have parity, but we don't have any twists. So this corner, these corners are actually pretty nice. I don't like some of the elves, but it's it's nice corners. Anyway, like I said, I'm not going to tell you how I memo. I would like to point out something you can do, though, that's rather advanced. I wouldn't do this in a solve, but people like um, Elliot might, would probably do this in a solve. I don't actually know. I can't speak for him, but it is a cool little thing you can do. And so right when I oriented the cube and in my orientation, I noticed that these two are set up for an H perm, right? So if I don't have parity, which I do, if I didn't have parity, I could actually finish the H perm on the top by putting this white green piece there and this white orange piece, this white orange piece there, and then do an H perm. 
and um you you could do that um we have parity though so it's like not worth it at all but that is something you could do if um you didn't have parity i wouldn't i still wouldn't do it even if i didn't have parity because you have to float to ub and i'm not good at floating to ub um i haven't been floating since i came back to three blind just because i've been trying to focus on fundamentals and stuff which has paid off you know i improved like a second and a half anyway um i'm just gonna get straight into execution we do have parity so we're gonna be swapping you if you are again uh i guess i should make note of this i would cycle break to here because i like the the elg as i say as i lock up like that I'm trying to see. I would not um, float to here. Like, can you even? This is why I don't like doing example solves on the fly. You could. F no, you. I, I, I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm confused now. Oh, I'm being. Yeah, you could float. Sorry. This is why I don't like doing example solves, is because I figure out a lot of what I'm doing during memo, and I didn't memo this cube. Sorry, no, you could float to UR right now. Um, do, like, here to there, and then there to there. That's actually two really easy elves, so I'll just do it. But I would, in a solve, I wouldn't float, because I'm not good enough. I don't remember any elves. Here, though, it's very easy. Uh, there to there to there. It should just be something like that. And then, uh, here to there, I just set up to UF with something like that. So that was a pretty easy float. Um, obviously worth it if, you know, I'm in the floating mood. But I wouldn't actually float in a solve just because I'm forgotten a lot of the elves. But those two elves are very easy, so it was definitely worth it to float. Anyway, um, there is an alternate elk for that where it sets up to. Um, that parody, I don't like it. I lock up on it, and it's kind of stupid. Plus, the Elgood I use cancels a lot more because it's like R U D. Well, R U D and F, but the start is you know like it starts with that, and that can cancel with a lot of things. So it's, in my opinion, a much better Elg. But another important thing about three blind, I see people talking about stuff a lot that I don't like, and a lot of people that I like talk to that are also good three blinders don't like is the idea of like optimal elves and like timing elves um timing elves in general is obviously a good idea i think but if you're like my elg is 0.1 better we should be using this if that's that's not how it works i hate to break it to you every person that does three blind is a different human being with different hands and different backgrounds in cubing no one person is gonna have the same optimal elg i mean they will but like there isn't an elg that's the best for everyone like even even the most obvious of cases there are two different elgs that people will prefer for example this elg like this is the most obvious eight mover ever right but you can also do it like that which is how i do it and um you can use both elgs um depending on like the flow of the solve and what feels better to do because that's definitely a thing that exists but to me moving your arm up or your hand up like that just feels more unstable to me than turning it down but even in a simple elg like that people can have differences over so it's a very stupid thing to be like this is the elg i have to use because max hilliard uses it so that means it has to be good that's not true because like for example max hilliard mained df and ubl right for a while before he switched to uf so he has much more experience with like m move comms than your you know six month into six months into three blind who's always used uf who's gonna have much less experience with m comms therefore m comms are probably gonna be worse like me i fucking suck at m m move comms so a great example is i've practiced this algo a lot so i don't do it but like this like, yeah, that's cool and all, and it's fast, but you can also do this. I'm not good at it anymore, but as you can see, I think it's a lot more worth it for the left side, but you get the point, right? Choose the elk that works for you, not that works for me. 
or for Max or for whoever, right? You have to try multiple Alex and choose the one that works for you because you are different than Max and you have a different turning style. Very important. Don't obsess over optimal algs because the optimal alg is going to be different for every person. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, let's get on to this after that little rant. Uh, first alg or first scramble without parity, right? Yeah, we don't have parity. And so I'm just going to once again go into the solves. Please ignore that. Uh, we have a two flip right here. And so I don't actually know many two flip elves. So I would do one of two things. I would do that. Probably not because there's like S move cancellations and I might get screwed over by that. So I'm going to be completely honest. I just save it to the end, do a Z2 and then execute a, a twist elves that I know. Um, That's a bad idea. Just learn, learn two twist elves. Don't be me. Two twist elves are definitely worth it, but whatever. I'm lazy. Sorry. They're watching football. And then I would just do this. Probably. Oh, uh, that's not the best solution. Let's see what we have here. So we have... Uh, I actually am going to show off a cool trick you can do here. Uh, it might not be worth it, but I just want to show it off because it's a cool idea. Um, I wouldn't do this in a solve, but I just want to show an idea of, like, what it is. Um, I wouldn't actually do in a solve. I'll just get to that. When I, I'll say that again when I get to it. I wouldn't do this in a solve. We have parity, so we're going to be swapping UF and UR as always. Or not as always, but as per usual. And so, this elg. Uh, we haven't, sorry, I've, I'm brain fried. I'm like, did I swap? I didn't, I did. I was like, where am I? Okay, sorry. Okay, we're swapping if you are. So. Doing algs without fat, going fast is hard. Um, here's another important thing. We have a flip. Breaking into flips, people debate whether how useful it is. Like, for example, Tommy Cherry is a very, very skilled three-blinder, and he told me he, like, rarely breaks into twists, or breaks into flips. You should. It's very worth it. And, um, not only are you doing, you know, like, two comms instead of a comm and a flip, which is basically guaranteed to be faster, you can also, like, cheese out of a really bad edge comm if you're smart about breaking into the twist, or breaking into the flip. For this, like, this elk is not that bad, so I'm not, like, cheesing out of anything. But, um... A very important thing about breaking into flips, and this just comes with Solve's experience and just thinking, like, consciously thinking about it, is don't break into the flip and then give yourself really bad outs. Like, you have to... There's two choices you have when breaking into flips. For example, I could go here to there and then there to there, or there to there, or I can target this side first. And I'm going to target this side first because it gives me two outs that I prefer. And so... We're going to go here to there, and then here to there. And I only did that because I've practiced the second elg a ton, because it's hard and I'm bad at move comms. And so, yeah, breaking into the flip, definitely worth it. Please do it. It saves a good amount of time, unless you're Tommy, and you're just a god at turning, and you can just spam TPS to make up for that, which I'm not, so I can't do that. Anyway... Um, here's what I here's what I'm gonna talk about. Um, I would not do this in a solve. It's called parity shifting, and basically all it is is if you if your last three letter pairs are like X Y Z, for example, the typical approach would be do the commutator X Y parity elg Z. But what you can do is you can also solve it with parity elg X commutator Y Z, and so you might be like, why is that even useful? Um, a ton of reasons. Um, for example, you can get out of a bad parity elg. So if, like, Z is a parity elg that you're really bad at and you don't like, you can just do X instead. 
Um, if you don't like the commutator x, y, you can do the commutator y, z instead. If you like the commutator y, z, you can do that instead. And so essentially it's just giving you two options and you choose the one that you like more. Um, I wouldn't parity shift here just because like it's, there's no difference. Both of these, both of the options I have, by the way, here to there to there, parity alg there, com there is what I'm going to show off just to show what parity shifting is like. But if you were to do the normal thing and go here to there, parity alg there, it's basically the same speed. There's really no difference. I just want to show it off. So parity alg, and then you see we're just left with that easy eight move com. Um, last example. And so, um, obviously you can float corners here. Uh, I am a part of the UFL gang as opposed to UBR. Um, obviously it's pretty trivial and it doesn't really matter, but, um, yeah. I, I would float here if I knew how to. I don't. I don't, I never even learned. At one point I knew UB, UR, UL, and DF. I could probably remember, like, all of UB in, like, 30 minutes if I tried, but... Uh, I'm gonna start that soon. I'm gonna start full floating soon. But um, anyway, I I'm I don't float corners yet, so I would just cycle break to here. So, um, parity. So we're gonna be sw switching UF, UF and UR. And this scramble looks pretty bad. Yeah. This is not a very good scramble. We have a flip here, so we're gonna be breaking into the flip like I talked about. Um, oh wait, no, we have parity, so we actually have two flips. I think I know an alg for this. I'll try it out when I get to there. Um, also, in general, I actually do flip algs at the start of solves. There's obviously no difference, but flip algs tend to be really, like... I don't know how to explain it, but they don't blend with corner algs at all. Almost every edge alg blends terribly with corner algs, so you're going to get, like, a huge lockup and a regrip if you do an edge alg. An, an edge flip alg and then a corner alg that's just experience i've done that a lot screwed it up a lot and like i'm done i'm just getting this out of the way and obviously an edge flip is typically just two comps so it's going to just blend right into the rest of the salt anyway um so i'm just going to get into the salt anyway Um, I cycle broke to UB, by the way. And I think the L for this is, like... Yeah, there we go. So, just a two... F that's a two-twist L that I know. Um, just twists UB, or UR, and LB. And so, now we're just gonna get into corners. Uh, I'm cycle breaking to UBR. That actually might have not been a terrible... No, never mind. WZ is a pretty shitty comp. Anyway, um, th those are all the scrambles I prepared. I feel like I left a lot of helpful advice in there. So hopefully this will be helpful for those of you who are just looking to push your three blind to the next level, optimize your um, basic three style skills, like breaking into flips, breaking into parody twists, um, choosing... Consciously thinking about L choice when doing those two things. Um, the three things at the start that I said that are very important for three blind that you should focus on. Um, yeah, as a final note, I just urge you to, next time you boot up a three blind session, just con consciously think about those three things that I told you about. And I think you'll be surprised at how helpful they are. Just memorize corners well with that first letter pair, like really sticking. Um, calm. No, don't rush. Don't have that feeling of like rushing and like having to get done and like I have to be fast. I have to get sub 20. I have to be fast. Just have fun. Go calmly, smoothly, no pauses. Just finish the whole solve. No pressure, no reason to panic. Just calmly do the whole solve. And it's actually way faster to do that too. So do that and consciously get rid of that pause in between edges and corners. And I think you guys will find that your three blind times will be not only more accurate, you'll have more accuracy, but they'll also be faster. Um, I don't think any of the algs that I used in this video were, like, all that crazy. Um, try them out if you want. If they don't work for you, just stick with what you have. Like I said, alg choice is a very individual thing. Every top three blinder agrees on this. 
don't obsess over optimal elgs because the optimal elg for everybody is going to be different based on past cubing experience like the max and df example or maybe you're just like an avid three by three solver and you just have a different turning style than everyone else or than other three blinders either way thanks for watching if you watched all of this this kind of felt a little like bit of a rant but i just wanted to get this out there because i feel like i have a lot of helpful advice for people to get better at three blind and um yeah thanks for watching bye